Welcome to your first chapter. Hopefully this lecture will give you a broad overview of marketing and the chapters to come. L.L. Bean has been very successful for numerous years and their premise is very simple. If any product doesn't meet a customer's expectations, whatever those expectations are, then L.L. Bean will replace the product, repair it, or refund the customer's money. The point is that the customer determines the expectation. L.L. Bean sells good merchandise at a reasonable profit. Their motto is to treat customers like human beings and they will always come back for more. Just take a couple minutes to think about how L.O. Bean's philosophy translates into sales and profits. And also, would you want to work for a company like L.O. Bean? What exactly is marketing? Well, it includes a lot more than you'd think. It's more than just a person trying to sell his or her goods out of a store. It's more than a TV advertisement you might see. There are a lot of facets to marketing, including understanding the importance of customers and their needs, the importance of testing and researching products, determining what price to uh, place on products, how you're going to promote it, and where you're going to sell a product. Marketing is not the same as selling or advertising. It includes selling and advertising, but it also means making products available in stores, arranging displays in a particular way, maintaining inventories, and much, much more. Marketing is a philosophy or a management orientation that stresses the importance of customer satisfaction as well as the set of activities used to implement this philosophy. The American Marketing Association defines marketing as the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion, and distribution of ideas, goods, and services to create exchanges that satisfy individual and organizational goals. So what does this translate to in simple terms? Well, Peter Drucker defines marketing fairly well and, and sums it up well when he says that the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product or service fits, fits them and sells itself. The concept of exchange means that people will give up something in order to receive something that they would rather have. Normally, people exchange money. This is probably what we're most familiar with. We go shopping at Freddy's, we find something that we need, and so we pay the cashier for it. Exchange can also be fostered through barter and trade of items and services. You might have taken uh, part of this without even knowing it. For example, some people uh, trade babysitting services or trade their skills, such as carpentry or plumbing, for something else that someone has to offer, either a uh, a skill, or some kind of service. Five things have to happen for an exchange to take place. There have to be at least two people involved. Okay, that one makes sense. Each party has to have something that the other party wants. Each person has to be able to communicate with the other person and deliver the goods and services sought by the other person. Each party must be free to accept or reject the other's offer. And finally, each person must want to deal with the other party. Exchange may not take place even if all those conditions are met. Just think about some, uh, something that you wanted to purchase. Maybe all those conditions were present, but you still decide not to buy the item. And a final agreement has to be reached. But marketing has still taken place even if a financial exchange has not occurred. For example, not everyone who sees an advertisement or enters a retail location actually makes a purchase. There are four competing philosophies that strongly influence a company's marketing strategies. These philosophies are commonly referred to as production, sales, marketing, and societal orientations. In the following slides, I'll explain these further. Production focuses on the efficiency of internal operations. Sales focuses on aggressive sales techniques for overcoming customer resistance, getting uh, customers to buy whatever product you're selling. 
market philosophy focuses on satisfying customer needs and wants. The customer comes first above all else. And then societal. Their focus is on satisfying customer needs and wants while enhancing individual and society's well-being. Their production orientation focuses on internal capabilities of the company rather than on the changing needs and desires of the marketplace. The company is concerned with what it does best based on its resources and experience rather than what on consumers want. The production orientation is most likely to work for companies producing generic products that compete almost solely on price. A good example of this is the fast food industry. For years, the focus of competition was price. Then as marketing orientation was adopted, fast food sought consumer input regarding how they liked their food prepared and what menu items they really wanted. A sales orientation assumes that more goods or services will be bought if aggressive sales techniques are used. The sales orientation is often used for unsought products like burial plots, life insurance, and, and real estate timeshares. The fundamental problem with the sales orientation is a lack of understanding of the needs and wants of the marketplace. The marketing concept says that the entire reason that a company exists is to satisfy customer wants and needs while meeting its own objectives. The marketing concept involves focusing on what customers want so that the company can differentiate its products from its competition. It also includes integrating all of the company's activities, including production, to satisfy these wants and needs. And finally, to achieve long-term goals for the company by satisfying these customer wants and needs legally and responsibly. Market orientation requires great top-level management, a focus on the customer, an understanding of your competitor's strengths and weaknesses and how to maintain a competitive edge, and being successful in getting all your business functions together in order to deliver customer value. The philosophy of societal marketing orientation says that a company doesn't only exist to satisfy the customer and meet company goals, but it also exists to preserve or enhance a person and society's long-term best interest. This orientation serves three different bodies, customers, the organization itself, and society as a whole. This philosophy has led many companies to produce products that are environmentally sound, such as concentrated soaps and det detergents that are sold in smaller amounts. When you eat at a fast food restaurant, you might notice that some of them use recycled napkins. Well, recycled paper for the napkins, that is. Every organization wants to develop a real competitive advantage against other companies, and they do this by creating customer value, building long-term relationships, and maintaining customer satisfaction. Many companies have learned the hard way that it costs a lot more money through marketing to bring in new customers than just to maintain their current customer base. Customer value is feeling like you really got your money's worth when you purchase an item or service. How many companies can you think of that really take a strong focus on customer value by offering products that always perform, by giving customers more than they expect, by avoiding unrealistic pricing, basically overpricing, by giving the buyer facts and figures and lots to read about their product that are truthful, and by offering an organization-wide commitment to service and after-sales support? The most successful companies usually understand that they best meet their own goals by satisfying the needs and wants and expectations of its customers first. Customer satisfaction is the feeling that a product or service has met or exceeded your expectations. The company culture focuses on delighting customers rather than just on selling products. 
The best example of this I can think of is when my parents stayed at the Ritz-Carlton in Maui. They ate there one night for dinner, and my father got up to get himself a glass of water. The waiter saw this and came back and told them that their dinner was free since he... Uh, since he had to go out of his way to get himself a glass of water. And when they checked out of the hotel, the day they checked out, they left both of my parents a going-away gift. They gave my mother a gold necklace and my father a leather carry-on. Obviously, that's, a, I think, a great example of exceeding customer expectations. Relationship marketing is a strategy that means forming long-term relationships with customers and contributing in some way to their success. Just think about all of the businesses around town, whether they're small or large, who have really worked hard to maintain a relationship with you to maintain your business. A company spends 10 times as much to attract a new customer than it costs to keep an old customer. Successful relationship marketing depends upon customer-oriented personnel who focus on building relationships with customers. This strategy also depends on effective training programs that teach employees and managers how to treat customers well. Relationship marketing also stresses that employees should have more authority to solve customer problems on the spot. And the final thing that's needed to build long-lasting relationship with customers is teamwork among employees. Anyone who buys from a company is a customer, whether that person is an individual or another company. Developing long-term relationships with suppliers and customers is seen as one of the most important areas for improving firm performance. There are numerous examples of companies who have built successful, long-lasting relationships with their customers, like Federal Express. One of the best examples of a market-oriented firm is Walt Disney Enterprises. The Disneyland theme park in Japan has been a tremendous success. Much of the success is attributed to outstanding service and a commitment to employee training. By empowering employees to take care of customer problems, not only do customers feel a lot better, but also employees take pride in their work and they get a lot more satisfaction from their job and a lot less stress. There's no doubt that customer service can be a challenging career and there are days when being on the front line of a business can be draining. Anyone who has worked directly with customers can probably recount their most difficult customers in vivid detail, but employees are expected to grin and bear it. Even when customers get abusive and this perpetually happy face is the cause of emotional burnout and physical ailment, according to a study conducted at Pennsylvania State University. So how can companies protect their employees and still maintain a customer is always right policy? The answer is empowerment. By training and empowering service employees to make confident decisions, employers alleviate some of the burden that comes with handling difficult customers. Some other suggestions include giving entry-level employees the ability to offer concrete solutions to complaining customers. Managers should allow frustrated employees to vent or perhaps give employees a break after a particularly difficult encounter. Management should also jump onto the front line of customer services, customer service so they realize exactly what they are asking of their employees. One of the initial steps in any marketing process is for executives to define what the firm's business is, what it is that they do. This ensures a clear customer focus. How is a business going to serve its customers? This also encourages innovation and it stimulates an awareness of customer change. There are numerous activities involved in the marketing process. First, marketing executives have to gather, analyze, and interpret information about the environment that they're in. This is called environmental scanning. They have to understand the organization's mission and vision and the role marketing plays in fulfilling this vision. They have to find out what benefits people want from the company to deliver and what wants they want the company to satisfy. 
The marketing process also involves developing a marketing strategy by deciding exactly which wants and whose wants the organization will try to satisfy. This means coming up with a target market strategy. By setting these marketing objectives and by developing appropriate marketing activities, they can satisfy the desires of their selected target markets. They also are responsible for implementing the marketing strategy and periodically evaluating marketing efforts and making changes if needed. Environmental scanning means that you're going around collecting information on a lot of different factors that have any kind of impact on how your firm will operate. By doing this, it helps identify what the market opportunities and threats are. The categories of uncontrollable environmental factors are social forces, demographic forces, economic forces, technological forces, political and legal forces, and competitive forces. These factors are considered uncontrollable because a company can't control social trends or demographic forces like um, the large group that the baby boomers comprise or economic forces. A company can't control uh, when there'll be a recession or inflation. Uh, com one company can't control technological forces, advances in technology or new inventions. A uh, company can never predict what uh, political changes will happen or what legal changes will happen within the system. And competitive forces, one company can't control whether or not another company decides to go um, into business, into the same business. The success of any company is defined by its mission statement. An organization's mission clearly defines its purpose or its reason for being. This, this statement also defines the boundaries of a firm's objectives, strategies, and actions. Market opportunity analysis describes market segments of interest to your company. It also estimates the size and sales potential of these segments and assesses key competition in the same segments. Basically, this helps determine are there people out there who want to buy your product or service? And if so, how many people are actually out there? Are there enough to keep you in business and help you make a profit? Marketing strategy has three basic components, setting one or more target markets, setting marketing objectives, and developing and maintaining a marketing mix. I'll talk about each of these three in the following slides. If you ran your own company, your target market would be the group of people that are buying your products or services. There are three types of targeting strategy that are most common. One is to appeal to the entire market with one single marketing mix. Two is to concentrate on a single market, market segment. And third is to appeal to multiple markets with multiple mixes. Your marketing objectives state what is to be accomplished through your marketing activities. Characteristics of marketing objectives should be consistent with your company's objectives. They should be measurable and bound by a time frame in which they should be accomplished. The benefits of making marketing objectives is that they can energize the firm's personnel. They can get people motivated. They can also serve as standards of performance. In studying marketing, you're going to hear about the four P's of the marketing mix all the time, so it's important to learn them and understand them. The four P's are product, place, promotion, and price. Product includes the item itself and its packaging, service, warranty, and brand or company image. Place or distribution refers to all the activities with storing and transporting products and where you're going to sell them. Just think about if you were selling ice cream to local vendors within Fairbanks, place or distribution would be very important to you because obviously you'd want to make sure that you got the ice cream to uh, your vendors before it melted. And maybe there's only particular stores that you would be interested in, in selling your ice cream to. You'd want to make sure that they had adequate facilities, that the place was nice and 
clean and had the customer base that you were looking for. All these things go into place or distribution. Promotion refers to whether you'll sell your product through personal selling, advertising, sales promotions, and public relations. All of these different uh, factors affect how uh, an item will be promoted. Price is also a big part of the marketing mix. It's determining what the buyer will give up in order to obtain that product. Just think about how many products are out there um, that have wi a wide range of price tags attached to them. For example, you can buy a $5 t-shirt or go to a completely different department store and buy a $55 t-shirt. Or let's say you were interested in buying a silver bracelet. You could go to Kmart and get possibly a $5 or $6 silver bracelet. But let's say you went to Rodeo Drive and you wanted to uh, buy a similar silver bracelet You probably, and you wanted to buy a Cartier bracelet, you probably couldn't pick one up for less than $200. It's the idea that the price tag is also a part of how a product will be marketed. Sometimes a low sale price is a great marketing tool and by the same token, sometimes a high sale price is a great marketing tool. It's the idea that you're selling quality or value. At this point in the lecture, I'm sure you've asked yourself the question, why study marketing? First of all, it plays an important role in society. It's vital to business survival, profits, and growth. It offers a lot of career opportunities, and it affects your everyday life. Just think about how many hundreds of times you are hit with marketing from businesses every day. A survey of 250 major U.S. corporations asked what is the number one planning challenge for the future. The firms responded that it's developing, improving, and implementing competitive marketing strategies. I think it'd be a real challenge to try and get through one day without being hit with some form of marketing. That means that between one-fourth and a third of the entire civilian population performs marketing activities. This means that marketing offers a lot of career opportunities in selling, marketing research, advertising, retail buying, distribution, product management, product development, and wholesaling. Marketing affects everyone every day. About half of every dollar we spend helps to pay for marketing costs like research and product development, packaging costs, distribution, and promotions like advertising and sales expenses. Companies will do almost anything to get you to buy their product or service. So hopefully this course will help you not only to understand how marketing works, but also to see through the marketing strategies and gimmicks to become a better informed consumer.